And welcome back, everybody. Two years ago, TU won 11 games. So last season, that 3-9 and nine mark was big-time ugly. Unexpected and no bueno. But as Coach Bill Blankenship admitted, at the end of last season, everybody on the team saw all that ugliness in the mirror. Al had a chat with the head coach who hopes a facelift is going to get this team back on track, starting with the opener Thursday night. How close to a must-win is this opener with Tulane? Well, the opener is a must-win for us just because we think you must win it. <laughs> you know, it, is it going to define our season? No, I don't think so. But it certainly gives us a chance to, to have a, a catalyst that springs us forward in the season and makes us feel good about ourselves. Or certainly we'd have to be fighting off of a, coming into the season on a loss. And, and so from that standpoint, I think it's really big that we start August outright and uh, get this win over Tulane. How difficult was it to overcome last season? You're not used to losing yeah. seasons. Obviously, your kids aren't used to losing seasons. How did you gather the group and, and start over? You know, we just tried to begin uh, with a lot of analysis, you know, back at the after the season was over. Tried to figure out, you know, what was right, what was wrong. Uh, it, it, there's a real tendency to want to just throw everything away when bad stuff happens. And so I think we did a good job of really trying to, to, to you know, not throw the baby out with the bath, so to speak, and, and yet really get our guys buying into what we knew needed to change. Uh, I've been very pleased with our players. They've had a, what I call a very healthy chip on their shoulder to, to prove to people that uh, that's not who we are. And so I, 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 I feel real good about this season. One key on defense was missing from a year ago in mm -hmm. Nelson. One key was missing from offense in Garrett. Yeah. So how important do those two individuals become in 2014? Well, it doesn't take long in practice for those guys to show up. Uh, Marco uh, at, on defense is a guy that's had three years under his belt as a starter. He was a freshman All-American. He has such great range. He covers a lot of, of issues that maybe might fall through the cracks otherwise. On offense, it's so important to have a receiver that you can put into one side of the field that can demand double coverage or at least a safety paying attention to him. And Kiaris gives us that big physical receiver that can run. Uh, I, I think we've added some other people on both sides that are going to help us, but those two guys are really key. Final question, how much has Dane Evans grown up from well, last year to this year? I think it's a very fair question, and, and what we've seen in practice is incredible leaps and bounds from Dane. Uh, but we're all going to believe it when we see it on Thursday night. And I really feel good about what he's done. He's, he's playing and operating our offense with poise. He's throwing the ball. He's settled in the pocket. He's throwing the ball with touch. I mean, all the different things that we felt like he had to do, we've seen in practice. As they do in Cape Canaveral, the countdown has begun. There's no doubt about it. Can't <laughs> wait. Good luck, Coach. Thanks. All right, Al, Coach Blankenship talking to you about Dane Evans. They're going to sink or swim with this kid. Well, TU folks are so used to having really good quarterback yep. play that I think yep. last year was such a shock to the system sure. for not only the coaching sure. staff and the team, but also the fan base. Now, as far as J.W. Walsh is yeah. concerned, he is the man with Oklahoma not, State. Let's not face. quite the same sink or swim situation, but he is definitely the starter. Coach Gundy saying Dax Garman will get some snaps against Florida State. But I think that this is JW's job to win. If he plays, he doesn't have to play lights out. But if he plays well, I think this team probably finds a way to win eight or nine. And I think it's his job throughout the entire year. And then, of course, Trevor Knight, Oklahoma quarterback. What We saw what he did in the Sugar Bowl. Is that the real Trevor Knight now? See, I don't think OU needs to have Trevor Knight play like he did against Alabama every week. That was 14 and 0 that, if he does. That was an MVP performance. Yeah. If he plays above average, Every game, OU's got a great shot to win every game. This isn't a star-studded team. This is a balanced team, in my opinion. Yeah. And I think Knight is kind of that character. I think he's going to be good, really good some days, maybe not so good next, but I think OU has enough talent to overcome a maybe one or two subpar performances. For him. Just stay healthy. So Trevor Knight, the starter this year, Strange but true, last year's starter and OU's active leader in passing yards, passing touchdowns, rushing yards, and rushing touchdowns. He'll be playing tight end this season. I tell you what, though, Bell. he's going to play some quarterback. You think Just so? Wait. Uh, well, OU fans certainly hope you know Trevor doesn't get hurt, but we'll see. For Blake, his school mattered more than his position. I'll laugh, and you know, quarterbacks will throw a bad ball, and I'm like, gosh. These quarterbacks, what are they doing? I mean, I'll joke around with them. But, uh. He can joke around with them.
because Blake Bell has still thrown more touchdown passes than any of Bell still looking downfield and wide open for the touchdown. Bell started eight games at quarterback for the Sooners last fall, winning six and saving the day in Bedlam. Touchdown! Great job, buddy. I'm proud of you, man. That was so cool. Great job. But as the Sooners prepared for the Sugar Bowl, it became obvious Trevor Knight was the future. So if he wanted to play, Bell had two choices for his senior season, change schools, or change positions. It is. It, it's tough, but you know we thought long and hard about it with my family and stuff, and um, you know we just you know kind of thinking the grass isn't always greener on the other side. You got to remember that too. And so the, the main thing is I just want to come back to Oklahoma, finish here, uh, you know, leave my legacy here. This is you know this is home to me. I wanted to help the team and, and come back and win a Big 12 and national championship. Six foot six, 255 pounder, now spends his time blocking linemen and catching passes as a tight end. So far, to rave reviews. I think he's going to have a, a major impact on, on what we're doing offensively. Dramatically changes the ability for play action pass in the middle of the football field because of his size and length. There's too much speculation. Will he be any good there? He's really good there. And why wouldn't he be if you think about it? You know, with, with, with the athleticism, the size. He, he looks just like he's played it his whole life. Turn, turn, turn it up. Bell admits a potential NFL future at tight end was a factor in his decision. So you better believe he is expecting to do big things in 2014. Yeah, I would say I, I want to catch a lot of balls, and, and uh, you know, I don't know what number that is right now, but I would say I want to. I mean, obviously, I want to be running around catching as many as I can. And if not, well, those quarterbacks will hear about it. All right, we take a look at OU Sweet Six of the Twelve. I got to tell you, Blake Bell's footwork has really improved since he's moved to tight end. By the way. He doesn't Welcome look bad. That's right. If you go spring to fall, I think he looks better. All right, beating Tennessee the third week means a win for Bob Stoops over SEC, and boy, would he love that. The game with Texas is always going to be yep. the biggie, and how that Texas has a new coach, even more so. And then right after Texas, you got to take on Kansas State and Bill Snyder. Those guys are good year in, year out. Baylor makes the visit in November, probably the game of the year in the Big 12. Sooner fans know all too well. A season can be ruined in Lubbock. The season finale at home with OSU also an awfully big game. All right, still ahead, find out who we believe is the best player in Oklahoma as our Sooner State College football preview continues.